And we are back. Another beautiful sunny Saturday. I'm gonna spend it here in the shop. I'm gonna tinker on the dually again. Love this thing as much as I, as much as it raises my blood pressure to work on this thing. It's, it's coming out cool. Little recap, regular cab, dually conversion. Check out the previous videos where we shortened the chassis, made it a dually, blah, 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 blah. Turned out pretty cool. As you can see, we've we've buffed it up and it's it's got a it's got a good shine on it now. Outside's looking good, powder coated wheels, hunkered down, little six eight drop, looking nice. But one thing that doesn't look very nice, bet this is terrible. I mean, look, look what the get out of here with that. And this, come on. Well, oh, we've been to the flea market here. This is ah. This whole thing needs a refresh. Yee. Now you gotta think, oh, don't, don't mind this. You gotta think, as cool as your truck may look on the outside, you're spending most of your time in it. Well, in theory, you're spending your time in it. Hopefully you're not working on it or pushing it. But you want it to look good inside. And crack dash, no carpet, you know, cold busted seat not gonna cut it you don't feel good you're driving your truck when it's ugly on the inside we're gonna fix that do a little makeover update it with some cooler stuff change the color of the interior when if this truck was solid if this truck was solid white the tan wouldn't bother me but the white and red with the tan i mean it just doesn't i mean you can kind of doesn't match needs to be red in my opinion Going to get new seat cover, carpet, dash, door panels, my favorite steering wheel. Show you that in a little while. And just kind of clean up and spritz up and spray paint and dye. And yeah, it's going to be, I mean, I don't even want to use the word budget. This stuff is expensive to do it, right? But I like it. This is what we're going to use. Or I'm going to show you what we're going to use. It's going to, it's going to be pretty cool. There's some different variations I'll explain and some different methods we're going to do but it should be a project you could take on in a weekend. I'm gonna try to do it in a day. It's probably gonna take three because if I plan for one, it takes three. That's just how it always works. Let's get started. We're gonna start off this project in my buddy Taylor's shop because I'd rather make a mess in his than mine. Shh, don't tell him. We're, like we talked about, we're going to red interior. They don't sell every part in red and what they do sell in red doesn't always match exactly. And I feel like there's certain parts of the truck that just have to match. To me, the dash the door panels have to match. The armrest have to match. The carpet's always gonna be a little different color because it's just a different material. As will the seat cover and, and visors, they'll be the same material, which will be a slightly different color. And that's fine. But when you have a dash and door panel next to each other and they're basically the same material, they really need to be the same color. And sometimes it's a little cheaper to buy the black stuff. Picked up this dash here yesterday from our buddies at Auto Metal Direct. They're like 15 minutes up the road, make really nice parts. This is the first time I've used a dash from them. We're gonna try it out, give you an honest review of it. But so far, I mean, it, it looks nice. And for door panels, these were LMCs. Two different kinds of door panels. These are what I would call like the base model door panels where it, it doesn't have the uh, insert here, like a velour insert. They don't have the lower half carpet thing, which you have to buy separately anyway. It's just a different style. I and mean, this being a base model truck, this is fine. And it doesn't have the extra insert here. It's fine. That's what would have came on this truck. Just have to punch the hole for the window crank, which actually it has, if you can see, it has the little circle right there as a template and also the two squares if it was a power truck. This is going to be a manual truck. We'll explain that in probably the next episode. But for now, these are the door panels we're gonna use. They came with new little grommets for the lock hole, took those out. They came with new weather stripping here, took those out. Obviously we don't wanna paint the weather stripping. And the armrest. This is already a different red than, I, than the rest of the stuff would have been anyway. I know this because I've done this before with red blue, green, I've done all the different colors. They're always a little different and we're gonna fix that. And what we're gonna fix that with is this little formula that I've come up with. This isn't the only thing you can use. There are other options, I'll explain. 
first things first, we gotta get this stuff clean. A lot of this comes with this like kind of oily, greasy mold release from when they make these. Obviously, paint's not gonna stick to that. Start out, we clean it with a little Ajax, wash it down, a little purple power, get the worst of it off. Use a little alcohol, use a little super prep, and in the instructions it'll tell you, but they use the tape, oh, hey, if anybody's looking for the tin, there it is. They also use the tape method. If you can make a piece of tape stick to the part, you know the paint's gonna stick to the part. Adhesion promoter, very important. We're using the Sim. I usually use the Bulldog. I'm using the Sim because they were out of the Bulldog. Sim's good stuff, we're gonna use it. A lot of times I'll use the, the Sim spray paint. They were out of it. So what we're using here is a PPG Deltron, and this is what they call a DBI. So this is actually a Chrysler color, JRR Radar, oh, excuse me, Radar Red, if I can talk. Reason we went with this is they didn't have a formula for the square body stuff. So we looked through a chip book of all the different little samples, and this was, I don't know, it's, I liked it. It was pretty close to what the visors and seat cover is. And a lot of these reds have a kind of a brown hue to it, and this doesn't. I don't think it really kind of does it justice inside, but we'll see it outside later. This is the formula, pretty simple. We clean it, we plastic adhesion promote it, we spray it with this, and this doesn't even require a top coat. You can top coat it if you want a higher sheen, but this, it lays out to a nice satin. Don't have to worry about UV because it is an interior paint. Don't have to worry about UV stuff. It shouldn't fade, shouldn't crack, shouldn't peel in theory. First time I've used it, but my paint rep swears by it. So I'm gonna take his word because I mean, he knows more than I do when it comes to this stuff. So time to uh, prep and paint. All right, so here's a little closer look. The sim, here's your part number. And basically, yeah, it says shake thoroughly for a minute, one light coat, let it flash for five minutes. Second coat, flash for 15 minutes, but no longer than 30. So, been shaking this thing like a salt shaker. Time to, yeah, let's get this party started. All right, got our DBI here. Mixing cup, this stuff is a one to one ratio. So you start with the number two in this case, I don't know exactly how much it's gonna take, but we'll fill it up to the next number two with some regular urethane reducer. There's a couple different temperatures. We're using the 70 because it's 70-ish degrees. So one to one, ready to spray. We got our buddy, Jay, you come here to tell me how, how to do it all, right? Do it the right way, man. <laughs> the right way, the okay. Right way. Well, this is as right as we know how to do it. Ta-da! First coat down. Amber does all the work and Tim takes all the credit. <laughs> Pretty much. We all have our parts to play. Got it yeah. all figured out. We got the camera lady slash editor lady slash boss lady. <laughs> and they're cleaning the floors out. Pretty good. Mm -hmm. Got a little bit of surface rust right there. A little uh, chassis saver. No problem. Get this ready, cleaned out. Gonna put some sound deadening in it. Kind of getting some of this dirt moving, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, sound deadening. A couple panels because I forgot to do the kick panels and the air vents. A couple more little things need to paint up. Moving right along, and I'll be so happy to get rid of this ugly steering wheel. Mm -hmm. That looks like it came from a truck stop in the 90s. Mm -mm. Gotta go. All right, Jay, you want to be on TV? Here you go. Oh, man. <laughs> 
Jay has found <laughs> a tenant that hasn't been paying rent. Uh-huh, look at this. Ooh, that's that good stuff. Wow, form-fitted in there. All right. Careful. Well, we're gonna drop the column for this? Uh, you don't have to, but we do need to move the shifter out of the way. Well, well. And again, if we do break this, that's all right. Tim's big money over here. You can buy another one. <laughs> Didn't even need it. Yeah, that's some, I don't even want to touch it without gloves. Go big girl. Ooh, ooh, ooh. All right, remember how you just vacuumed? Yeah. Yeah. I do that again. Man, imagine, imagine driving it this low. This is so nice. Can you see over the steering wheel? Yeah. It's, it's actually it's quite comfortable. All right, it's coming out of your way. Oh. <laughs> Woo! Now, a good body, man. Can cover this in uh, Bondo. Make it real nice. It's not Bondo, it's polyester body filler. Oh, wow. You're right. Technicals. All right. What else do we want to take? Dude, look at this Unistrap bracketry. Definitely been to three toys. Ah, oh, dude. <laughs> it's bolted solid. <laughs> Heck yeah. All right. Yeah, Pentagrass flea market special right there. Hello. <laughs> hey, you think Sloan wants these? Dude, we should just take those and put them in the box. <laughs> you wouldn't know what hit them. God dang, What is this? Be funny. What did you find? I don't know. JH. Oh. Some kind of key? Mm-hmm. You know? Rain dial. <clears throat> Some kind of like sprinkler? Know. Call Austin. See, I like Never been smoked in? I like taking old vehicles apart. You find so many goodies. All right, so if we get out of here, Amber can clean this up for us. We'll put the new nice stuff in. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> well. Cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah, where does this one go? It's not that bad. Yeah, that thing's got like a thousand splices right here. It comes off the side of this ECU stuff. And if I knew we weren't going to disturb anything, I'd just take that out. This thing didn't invent a jigger? Yep. Just kidding. Original heat. Bam. Oopsie. Whoops. Whoopsie. Mm -hmm. Hey, at least it's on the metal and not on the fresh carpet. For sure. Cool. Yep. Clean vacuum. And it would be smart to go get some speakers. Speakers and speaker wires before putting a dash pad in. Yep. Um, that way it's there. Yeah, not in and out. And they just had a fit. Look at all these splices, dude. Wow. Did you work on this one? Uh uh, not me. All right. Is there even a speaker wire for that side? This is the whole harness. Where does that? <laughs> Where does that lead? That led to nowhere. Okay. Well, oh, we didn't show them the, the sound system that was in here. Oh, dude. Your finest Kenwood. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Oh, no, it gets even better. Not only did it have the finest Kenwood. Dude, don't show my home stereo. This was zip tied right here. Is that a Sony Explode? Mega Bass. Mm. Yeah, not reusing that. <laughs> You want an early Christmas present, you can have it. You know, I was thinking, man, I wish I had that. But I'm gonna save it for Andrew or someone less fortunate. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it wants to round off. He's gonna round my last bowl. Can't find good help now these days. I'm saying it's not mine. Hey, you go. Right, we gotta sandblast those and powder coat them. <laughs> right? Ooh, oh, ooh, more goodies. Never know what you're gonna find on these. Obviously, changing the color of the interior. Gonna have to have a different seat cover. 
Oh, and, and more plastic stuff to paint. Whatever. It's part of it. <laughs> Luckily we got the cover. I'm gonna get the old cover stripped off. Paint the new or paint the tracks to make them look newish. Put it back together. Real simple. Everything's held together with these hog rings. You can see. We'll go through and show you how to snip those, strip the old cover off, get everything cleaned up, stretch the new cover on. Pretty simple. What you're gonna want to do is leave these in the parking lot so you get a flat tire. Yeah, let's make sure you park right there. <laughs> yeah. Do the old man grunts. All right, just like that, bam, done. Old cover off, new cover on. We used hog rings. A little better pliers than come with the kit, but yeah, you know, it, it did at least come with them. The cover come from LMC. They have several different color options, obviously. Red or dead, so here we are. Now we move to the lower, which is the little bit tougher one, but it's fine, knock it out. So if you set it out in the sun, it'll get all these creases and whatnot out. Uh, mm -hmm. If you're impatient, you can try to heat gun it, but if you heat gun it, be real careful not to burn it because it is vinyl, it will melt. Now last part of this, we went and wire brushed the tracks, got those restored, a little Rust-Oleum, good to go. Last couple little holes, we're just gonna cut here and bolt it back together, see it'll be done. Easy enough. Before we pop the seat back in, we gotta get these tracks lubed up. If anyone knows, anyone try to use these things, these get rusty, crusty, and hard to slide back and forth. Had a company reach out, it's pretty cool. AIM products here, AIM lubricants. They sent us some stuff to try. The guy was really cool. He said, use this anywhere we'd use PB Blaster or WD-40, and this is exactly what I do to break all this stuff loose. Send us some little grease stuff we're gonna use along the way to try out. It's supposed to be, let's see, plant safe, pet safe, helps lower your taxes, improves your credit score. It should be, should be good to go. Let's try it. Ooh, look at that. Oh yeah, right away. Way better. <laughs> way, way better. Yeah, first time trying this stuff, pretty cool. Doesn't, doesn't have that funky smell that PB Blaster has. 
It almost smells like vegetable oil. It does. Like it has a, like a vegetable smell. But it's not like, it doesn't have that weird like greasy. I didn't even touch it yet. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of huh, different. Okay. okay. So far so good. We got about half a dozen things in this thing that needs to be lubed up. So we'll try it. Aim extreme duty lubricants. Ooh, getting a little late, a little chilly. We'll make a little progress tonight. Catch you up on what I've done as I tinker around a little bit here at the shop. Got some sun visors in. Got these bad boys from LMC. Reused our stock stems. Just painted them red with the same interior paint. Put those in, boop, ready to go. Same thing for our kick panels. Yep, pull those out, paint them red, paint the doors and handles black. Good to go. Started on the sound deadening. Had a little more rust here than I liked. Cut this section out, weld a new piece in. Good to go now. More sound deadening. Let's show you how this stuff goes in. Showed you before, you probably already know, but if you do, you can skip this part. All right, got the floors clean. Went over there, everything with a wire brush, anywhere that had exposed rust, anything that looked funky. Put a little chassis saver on it. All that'll be good to go now. We're using 80 mil sound deadening by Silas, I guess you'd call that. I don't know, comes off at eBay, Amazon, 36 square foot box, does pretty much the floor of a regular cab truck, but you know, we did the back wall, so it's like a box and a half for this. You just peel off the backing. Now, I've done a bunch of this, so it's a little easier for me just to throw a whole sheet in. Also, I, if I didn't say, make sure that the floor is clean. We vacuumed everything out first. But let's take a, take a sheet, and you can cut this into smaller pieces, make it a little more manageable. But I'll take a sheet, kind of pull it up into place. Nice square edge here to start with. Just get a little roller. Uh, I think that came off of eBay or Amazon years ago as well. And you start working it in. You make sure you get, I kind of like start from the middle of the panels and work my way out. Work it down in all the cracks and crevices. Yeah, and then up here at the top where it hangs over a little bit, just trim that off with a razor knife, good to go. Rinse and repeat through the entire floor. Like I said, you can cut it into smaller, more manageable squares. I like to do the big sections first just because it's uh, gratifying. Anyway, a lot of this, keep going. All right, obviously we got all the sound deadening in. All that turned out really nice. Now, we, we're time to put the carpet in, but before we put the carpet in, wanted to go ahead and run some of the wires. So we came in and ran the wires for the speakers, for the front speakers to go to the back. The reason being, we're gonna run one of our Bluetooth amplifiers, like you've seen in some of our other videos. That'll go to the back. Don't have any of the equipment yet, but wanna go ahead and put the wiring in before I put the carpet in, just because it's easier. Same thing through the center. Three wires in the center for ground, power, and the remote wire for the amp. All that's taped down with gaffner's tape, I think is how you say that. Laid it out all where it stays away from any of the bolt holes or any of the contact points for the seat rails. Taped all that down so it'll stay put. Now time to put the carpet in. Pretty straightforward. Right, got the seat in, carpet in, everything's looking really good. Went with a set of new aftermarket seat belts from LMC. This is what they call their direct replacement. They're very slimmer, they're not exactly stock. As you remember, tan interior doesn't go good with red belts. Red belts that are original tend to fade really badly, so why not just get new ones? Anyway, now time to focus on the doors. These, this thing didn't even have door panels. So once again, New ones from LMC. 
you saw that we blacked that out. New armrests, obviously. Put the trim, took the trim off to paint it, put it back on now. Also, while we were in here, went ahead and put new inside door handles. These things are like $8 a piece from AMD. The other ones are all pitted up and nasty looking. Why not? It's eight bucks. We're already here. Obviously, we gotta get rid of these guys. Those who we don't need those anymore. Now we just put them on. Now these things can be tight. They can be a little bit of a booger bear. Just take your time. Don't break anything like I've done before. You'll slide the handle through first. Make sure you get your lock cylinder or lock knob thingy, my bob. You slide the rubber over the lip down on there and there you go the armrest they took one nut and washer from the bottom then it'll take two screws here and there'll be one two three four screws along the bottom I'm not gonna put those in there because obviously we got some more work to do these doors no point of fastening two or three times still got to rebuild this new weather shift from here we're actually going to convert these power windows to manual windows so we'll end up putting a hole in it the back side of these panels already have it like marked out where it should go. It's pretty simple, but for now I wanted to show you the finished product. And being a base model door panel factory, this is just what the cup looks like. But I put these door panels on my bridge port and hogged them out a little bit because I really like the chrome cups. So now after I've clearanced it around a little bit, we can put the chrome cups in here and it just gives a little more of a finished look it's going to have a chrome window crank obviously these are going to be new chrome there it just kind of kind of ties it together a little better now obviously the steering wheel had that ugly cover on it peeled it off and it actually still has a lot of the texture in it could probably probably be cleaned up nah gotta have something cooler we'll show you here in a second my probably second, third favorite wheel GM ever made. First things first, gotta get this off. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna put the new wheel on to give you the whole effect of the interior, but this has the notorious column wobble. We'll fix that in a video coming up soon. First things first, gotta get this old wheel off. All right, once you get the nut off, which is 13 sixteenths by the way, and what I like to do is on the carpet, on the seat somewhere, everything you take off, as silly as it seems, I like to put it in the order I took off. So like starting it on the trans tunnel, I'll start with the horn button and then the retainer ring and then the nut and just work your way down. So it kind of helps you remember which order stuff came out of because once you tear it down as far as like we're eventually going to have to, it's nice to remember exactly which order everything had to come about, come apart. So that had to go away. We used a Puller OEM brand harmonic balancer. 27019 kit works really well as long as you don't lose a couple of the pieces like I did. Works real good to pull these steering wheels. And I can whoop. And here it is. The GM Comfort Grip or Split Bar or has a lot of names. One of my favorite wheels GM ever made. You can buy these brand new reproduction. Black, red, blue, maybe green? Black, red, and blue for sure. Has the cool little bow tie red white blue horn button comes in a whole kit off of ebay is up it's kind of expensive it's about two and a quarter looks good though that's what i want and you know the red kind of goes with the red and I don't know, part of the quintessential hot rod package and it's a direct bolt on comes with the hub adapter which is spline takes the same splines these two holes are for a puller if you need to take it back off. And this one lines up with the little horn button contact. So you put that on. And then also comes with some hardware, new horn button contact here. So here's your horn contact assembly. It has the pin, the spring, and the little retainer guy that's going to fly off into orbit most likely we'll try to put it all together here for you it is a pain in the butt i might get frustrated with it and leave it for later but we'll see it should all go together like that 
you go down the hole and in this little plastic contact there's a slot for it line it up twist it and it should stay in there but like i said we're taking it back apart just that's how it should go Once all this is screwed together, pop on like that. And if we had horns installed, just like that. Easy enough, completely transforms the look of the truck. You'll see once we get the dash together, all this red ties together really nicely. It's my style. You better not smudge my animal. Or the car, you know how much I pay for that? Three ninety nine. The yeah. silver sharpie. Uh huh. Remember the clips top now. I didn't. Remember. That's why I gave you the hard side. They doing the square holes? Yeah. Round peg, square hole. That's good. Need this. Get the end out there where it needs to be. I guess it goes on the inside of this. Uh, yeah, on the inside of the rubber. Yeah, not much that holds these in. Just a little spring clips across the top. I think there's like five of them, maybe? You have to re either reuse those from your old dash or buy them. Either way. A couple screws across the bottom, a couple screws on the end. That's that. Now, we got to put the gauge bezel back in. And just like that, with about twice as much time as I thought it was going to take, interior's done. Ish, kind of. Still a few things that I forgot lock knobs i still have to work on the headlight switch i think it needs one of those so that's not in yet i want to get a new parking brake pad got to figure out what i want to do i'm thinking some of these trucks base models had like a radio block off plate maybe try to find one of those either get a new fuel tank selector switch or delete this because it only has one tank now so maybe make a little delete plate i don't know tell me what you think Forgot my AC or defrost vents. Got to paint those, put those in. All in all, though, I mean, I can't be mad at it. It looks so much better inside. And as you can see, because we have the hood up, red matches red. Huh? Huh? I'm liking it. Works good for me. Seat belts. Yeah. Everything you need. None of what you don't. Best part right here. Yes, sir. Polished out the gauge cluster, uh, bezel, not bezel, lens. That's looking good. This was actually an AC bezel, and I made some block off plates for the vents there and there because this new bezel is, golly, like 140 bucks. This was free. I had this stuff laying around. It's textured just like the rest of it. I don't know. It would convince me. Doesn't have vents anyway, so might as well. All in all, pretty good way to spend a couple Saturdays makes it look so much better a few more key components it'll be a very presentable interior for I don't know let's not even talk about money it was kind of expensive but this isn't a budget build it's whatever anyway thanks for sticking around like subscribe we're growing we're having fun let's keep doing that tell all your buddies tell your sister-in-law see you next time